Passive House is about performance. Um, in Europe, they will build with solid masonry and clad with insulation, such as polystyrene, and then sprayed smart renders. They can build with rain screens of um, cedar boarding. Britain and Denmark, I believe, have a tradition of cavity wall construction. That is what most builders in this country understand, and most clients actually. Um, that's the way that we're going to construct Denby Dale. There are advantages and disadvantages. Um, the first advantage is thermal mass. To get as much mass within the insulated envelope, it is better to use concrete. So we've got concrete floor slab and dense concrete inner leaf to the, um, to the outer walling and internal partitions. We are used to building in that way. We know where we stand and also we have the advantage of good sound insulation and minimal cracking of plaster work. So from our point of view, there are quite a few advantages. The other constraint was that in West Yorkshire, we have a tradition of natural stone. The local planning department stipulated the use of stone on the outside of the building. So here we are, we've landed back at a cavity wall construction. We have experience of this over the years and we built a low energy house um, in Longwood, in fact called the Longwood Low Energy House um, in the 1990s. Well, we built with a six inch cavity, unheard of at the time. Dembydale is doubling that and we're having 300 mil. Disadvantages, it's more difficult to have continuity compared with say a timber frame which you can line with vapour barriers and air tightness tapes at a given time in the construction. With cavity wall, you are relying on the wet plaster on walls and its junctions with doors, windows, floors, roof, etc. being near tightness barrier and you only have one go at it. Timber frame, you can actually test it as you're constructing before you do the final finishes, allowing you maybe um, more latitude in repair work. We've now got to the position of the floor and foundations fully finished. We're now moving on to our cavity wall which we are building in dense concrete block as I discussed already for thermal store inside. 300 millimeters of dry therm fiberglass insulation bats in 300 mil layers and 100 mil of natural stone. Below ground we've used polystyrene, rigid insulation, which is as good an insulator as the fiberglass above. The reason we've used solid closed cell material below ground is one for rigidity in that if we've got any ground movement it becomes a structural um, hole if you like and two if there is any ground water the closed cell does not take up any of the moisture as soon as insulation gets soaked in moisture it becomes ineffective mm. and becomes actually a cold bridge we have taken the grey insulation like so You can see that in the photographs, I hope. So this is one block, 300 mil. And you'll see on the photographs that's in black. We've cut it at an angle at this point because we will get some water percolation coming down the inside of the stone out of leaf because stone and brick are porous. So you have to design to um, cope with that situation. The fiberglass bats are woven in such a way that they're layered vertically. So any water that does come in through 
through wind powered rain would tend to run down in the first course of fiberglass. So we've, what we've done is put a cavity tray, plastic cavity tray, in that situation, which acts as the damp proof course, as everybody knows about, but also it will take away any water that might be blown into the cavity. If we'd chopped the polystyrene off square, there would have been a danger of ponding of water between on top of the, the damp proof course or on top of the polystyrene which in effect would have been a cold bridge the water would act as a cold bridge we maintain this cavity by using teplo ties that's a trade name um, and they're made of resin and basalt which is from the russian space program and they are extremely strong um, but a good insulator in their own right. If we had stainless steel, which is our alternative really, there is, uh, and uh, at this level of performance, we will lose heat from the house through to the outside, and we will get condensation forming on the plaster at this point, because that will be a cold spot. These teplo ties are good from a construction point of view, good building practice and um, gives us a nil reading as far as heat transfer is concerned in PHPP. In principle we have to encapsulate the insulation layer. This is basically to stop thermal bypass. Now this is where insulation does not perform where air moves around it but basically wind blowing past or through the insulation can make it perform to 40 percent less in certain situations again crucial now the way we've coped with this is by having our cavity walls that we have our wind and rain barrier which in our case is stonework a traditional system but also the cavity will be closed at the top and it's um, basically got no openings into it at any point, including around window openings. So we're trying to stop air movement either through or around the insulation.